picked the wrong weight to quit sniffing glue. Send a coded message for Starfleet Commander, Priority One. Federation Science Vessel Grissom arriving, Genesis Planet, Mutara Sector to begin research. JTS to Bond Commanding. Hi, sir. Coding now. Well, good morning and welcome back. It is time for a new model. It's new week. It's new model week. It's one I've been looking forward to now. Um, I know this is from the wrong film, I, up front. I know the, the model is from the search for Spock. But I have the, this urge to use the con quote of, we meet again, old friend. Um, because what we're working on is the 350 scale Grissom. Now, uh, it's, it's odd that for such a, you know, I'm going to say it, it's a B-list ship, B or C-list ship, that I've already done so many versions of this thing. Of course, there's the, the Wii Grissom, the thousand scale Grissom. I have the filming model scale Grissom in the other room. If you're really interested, you can go back in my playlist and, and find all of that Grissom build. But we're going to be building the 350 scale Grissom. Now, the thing about having so much experience building Grissoms or Grissom I, I don't know what the uh, 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 what, what the uh, plural of O birth would be, O births. Uh, but uh, I know the pitfalls of this ship. I know the problems with it. Luckily, I still have a lot of my reference material from when I built the big one, so that's going to be a help. Um, and we're going to learn some more about model production along the way. Uh, I, I, I have been gratified to see the, re the response to that when people, uh, when I impart what little bit of knowledge I know about uh, how models are made and how that affects what you've got on your table. Um, but before we get into all of that, I would, uh, I'm, and I, I dearly love the people at round two. I do, I, I hate, I hate having to whine at them, but I'm going to whine at them. Um, a lot has been said about the packaging of this, uh, the box art on this kit, and it's all justified. Now, uh, I spent many, many years in print art, you know, doing doing art for print, and or doing you know books, brochures, mag, you know, magazine ads, things like that. So I know my way around a print job, and I can tell you, I know exactly what the problem is with the uh, artwork on the box of the Grissom that doesn't excuse it. It's, it's, a, uh, it's a rookie mistake and uh, we deserve better than that. What it is for those who, do, who, who if, you have, if you don't have this box yet, I will show you. Well, come on, come on down to the table. It's easier that way. Alrighty, here we are and I've got this pile of parts and I've cut up the box lid just to make the references easier to get to. And here is the, here's, here's the hubbub. People are saying, what's the hubbub, bub? Here's the hubbub. Um, when this box was produced, round two has taken to using the inside of the uh, bottom of the box as a place that they can put their paint references and their decal placement references. On the one hand, it's very smart because it's full color printing. You might as well take advantage of it. When the box is printed, it is, well, I'm trying to clean this mess up. Here's the bottom of the box. And it'll have, you know, flaps along the side, but it's printed flat and then glued together. That's how printing is done. Always has been, always will be. Uh, let's see, it laid out something like that. But I've cut it all apart. Here's the thing. Here's the thing and I'm going to tell you. Um, when you are using this area as your, um, as your reference for your paint and for your, uh, see here's the, shows you the paint colors to use and where the decals go. Now, when you, when you set up a job for print, you have different layers. Your objects are on different layers. Your background could be on a layer. Your photos could be on a layer. Your text could be on a separate layer. All of that happens. Now, somebody didn't check the press proof. When this, when this went to press, somebody forgot to check. And they put the photos 
on the top layer. And what mean what that means when you put the photos on the top layer is that you get something like this. See these lines that indicate where the decals go? They stop at the edge of the photo. They don't go up to the actual area where the decals go. Now it's a minor inconvenience. You could figure out where the decals are, should be going by looking at the photo. But see, this is more this is more accurate because it this uh, line actually goes over top of the photo. So this panel is correct. The, 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 you have the number, you have the line, you have the indicator of where it goes. We're all happy with that. But where you run into problems is something like this. Now obviously number 26 is meant to be this red box. But it looks like it means, it, it means to put the uh, on the on the pylon instead of where it's supposed to go all they would have had to have done was put one more check on here to show that these white lines should have been on the top layer you put the photo behind the white lines and everybody's happy because now these will go all the way up to here where it's supposed to be or here where it's supposed to be it's a it's a minor inconvenience. You can figure it out, but it's a bush league. Um, it's a bush league mistake. Somebody should have just run by the proofer one more time and looked at it. This twelve has to go all the way up to here, and twenty nine. Well, where does twenty nine go? Well, twenty nine goes. We look. At, we look at sheet. We look at the decal to find twenty nine. And 29 is, okay, we look for 29. Well, 29 is this guy right here. This line should be coming all the way in to here to indicate that that's 29. It, uh, it's a, like I say, it's a rookie mistake. It's just, it's just that level of, of care that should have been taken that wasn't. And as much as I jokingly like to catch round two on typos and things, um, that's really something that, that they, should, they should have a better eye on, get a better handle on it. And the last thing is, um, I, again, another, another uh, lesson in model making or, or model engineering. When you are injecting a, a part, and if it's a one part or two part mold with an inside and you know an inside and outside you can do something beautiful like this this is an absolutely wonderful part it is uh injected it is uh you know you you uh, do you put it in the mold I, i've cut the sprues off of everything but uh this is basically one side detailed uh it you know there's a mold goes against the mold uh, the other side of the mold comes up against it. Uh, uh, hot plastic is or hot styrene is injected into it, and you get a mold. Now, uh, you cannot with a two-part mold with the top and the bottom. You can't get any detail beyond a certain point when it comes to putting detail on the sides of things. Um, think of it like uh, you were doing a vacuum forming, like you were pushing. Back, uh, warm plastic down over a shape uh, you can get the top detail very good you can't get side detail unless you break that mold into more uh, that, that tooling into more mold and more pieces like you're injecting from the top and from the sides as well or, or releasing the, uh, the metal that's up against there from the sides and from the top that's why there's no deep that's the long and short of it why there's no detail on the sides of these engines that's also the reason why there is no detail on the window inserts on the Voyager or the sensor pallets along the side you can get a whole lot of good detail on the top but not coming in from the sides unless you break that tooling into more pieces so that it comes out of the mold easier 
that has resulted in an issue for these engines that require the um, Again, these are off of the, off of the uh, decal. They require the panel lines to be rendered as a decal rather than uh, engraved details. Now, you could use that as, as a guide and engrave your own here. Perfectly acceptable way to do that. The problem where it comes into making it interesting is there is paint color that needs to be... There are panels that need to be painted here, and they need to be painted to match the panel lines. Well, you can't put the decal down and then paint over it. That's going to paint over your decal. So what I've found that I needed to do was to uh, make a scan of the decal, and then I'm laying it down on the engine where, on the nacelle where it goes, which goes something like that. And I'm using that to create this shape as a painting mask so that when I paint it, then I could put the decal back over top of it and it will, it will give me these lines like they are supposed to be. Um, I suppose you could take the same, take this same uh, printout put carbon paper on it if you remember the, what carbon paper was. You kids out there you might have to ask somebody what carbon paper is. You take carbon paper and then you back that against this and then you draw the lines on your side and then you scribe them in. That could work. I'm going to opt to do the other way which is to paint those and then put those decals over it. We're going to see how well it works. Uh, other than that, uh, this kit is very well done. It's back on familiar territory, like I've said. Um, I'm going through and deciding what parts I can go ahead and put together. Uh, I think I can put this much together all at once and um, before I can start painting. This all looks very familiar, particularly if you're used to seeing this one because, the, again, the... the uh, it's merely a, a blown up version of that, but with more detail. And um, you can really see the, if I put this next to my huge grism, you can see where the huge grism's proportions are not accurate. So let's get to the parts. I put, obviously you can see I put a primer coat on everything. And I'm going to go through and start picking out the parts that I can uh, go ahead and put together. Like I feel I can go ahead and put this piece in. That's not going to impact anything. Um, but let's get to it. Sorry about the long winded explanation, but uh, let's get to it. Alrighty, construction is well underway here on the uh, excuse me, on the grism. It was uh, Bojangles for lunch today, uh, in case you're keeping track. Um, there's some things I want to take care of now, uh, light blocking wise, before we go too much further, and one of them is this piece here that uh, goes on the underside here to uh, give you your impulse engine. I want to go ahead and light block that before I put it on so that uh, I don't have to worry about it later. Let me get some scissors out to cut this. Now, the the, the the wonderful benefit of this piece is I don't have to hollow it out. Uh, I am going to follow a lot of the same uh, building methodology that I used on my big grism, but I don't have to worry about cutting any channels in this because this is nice and hollow. Uh, I will end up building the pontoon and the pylons as one unit, and then I can actually put this on top and run wires out through it and then build the uh, top section with the uh, main saucer on it as one unit and lay it down on top of that. You know, this, uh, this and the cells will be one unit wired up the same way so that I can just add these two together at the last minute. But that's going to run the it's going to uh, solve the problem of how to run wiring up the pylons and uh, into the primary deck uh, again 
The nice thing about this being two pieces instead of one is that you can run and they, they have uh, given you a channel here to run wiring in which is very nice. And I don't have to worry about trying to slice a hole and run a channel through a solid piece. So um, all of the all of the it's it's all of the good and none of the bad of the uh, larger Grissom that I built. So yay on that. Um, I'm trying to determine what parts I can go ahead and build that aren't going to impact the rest of the build. And there's things like these uh, the fins for the nacelles that I can go ahead and put together. Um, I want to start getting some paint on this today, even if it is just more uh, uh, primer, like uh, this joint here I've cleaned up, but I want to put some primer over that, make sure that's nice and clean. But I would like to get this much of it built today. Um, I cannot put this part on until I start, or until I have got my wiring finished. So uh, I can tape it down because it's going to be handy as a jig to when I go to make up this angle here is if I can tape it down that'll help me uh, form it to the right dimensions but let me get some uh, let me get some tape inside of here okay so I want to uh, glue the pylons together just to make them easier to paint but before I do that I need to make sure that I can run two strands of, or two two bundles of wire up here because we've got a set of strobe lights and a set of constant lights that each need their own power so uh, um, now that I know that that channel is clear I can go ahead and get these guys glued up and get ready for a primer coat on them okay work is coming along slowly but surely um, I still haven't decided um, whether or not I am going to use direct bulbs or uh, fiber optic uh, there are places where each one has its benefits. Uh, I would very much well I'll have to see what the little pe what the little nano bulbs will give me but uh, I would very much like to run a fiber optic to these backs here because I can just put one on the side there and uh, run it up through and then run the bulb somewhere in here but I have not decided that for certain I've got the uh, the main seam got that puttied it's uh, been reinforced with some epoxy on the inside back here again there are plastic inserts that are made to go in the uh, the navigation holes or the uh, formation light holes and I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to use those or whether I'm just going to run a fiber. Uh, I've got the uh, pylons ready to be primed. Uh, this, I wait for that seam to dry and then sand that up and that'll be ready to get ready to be primed. And then um, uh, this has been primed. I want to go ahead and paint the blue here and then mask those off. Paint the metal, uh, the gun metal here and then mask that off. I don't I don't think I'm going to be providing window masks for this because um, these windows believe it or not are even smaller than the Voyager windows the thousand scale Voyager windows and that was about the smallest I could plot reliably so um, what I'm going to recommend is that you paint this and and then mask the whole thing off and then put the windows in from the inside but then the whole surface because you only have windows in this piece and in this piece and they can be painted separately and then windows inserted uh, from the inside obviously um, that would only leave just just this seam here to clean up Just that seemed to clean up around the edge and that's far enough away from the windows that you could mask that whole area off and uh, clean this edge up that I think is going to be I just don't see how plotting those tiny windows is going to be that practical of a thing 
So uh, these are the things I'm learning as a, oh and another thing the pins on this kit they either needed to be bigger or they needed to be gone. They they are very fragile and they'll snap off the first time you use them incorrectly and anybody who builds a model knows you are going to be pushing it on and taking it off and putting it on and taking it off a couple of times before you're ready to be finished and these these pegs here are the pins are just not resilient enough you'll end up losing them let's see what we got these ones here are a little bit larger they'll last longer but the uh, the smaller ones are next to uh, next to useless well it's been a whole day of fitting and fighting and cutting and sizing and I am going to celebrate by um, putting some blue on this ship because I've got all the masks done for the blue areas which are these top stripes on the outer pylons these indents and then these four indents here and I can let those be drying all night tomorrow tonight and start painting uh, the deck tomorrow so uh, all I need to do is mix up a nice color now they recommend the duck egg blue or robin's egg blue what I prefer to use is uh, the light blue with just a little bit of buff in it that warms it up some and I probably will end up putting a drop of medium blue in it as well so I'm gonna make this mix up in the cup well you know what I'm looking at no that'll work I say I'm looking at that and that was already mixed to another color so um, let me get the dropper out mix up some color and spray some blue well, huzzah we've taken the first step we are off and running we've got the blue on and now we'll let that dry overnight come back tomorrow I'll mask it and uh, we'll start on the rest of it um, it's going pretty good going pretty well um, here are the here are those uh, masks for the front of the nacelles that I was talking about so the decal can go over top of that what will happen is I'll paint this it's weird because some of the pieces it's going to be more practical to paint them white and then mask the white and paint the gray over it and some pieces it's going to be more practical to paint the gray mask that and then paint the white over top of that so uh, there's going to be a little of everything I think a little of everything Good morning everybody it is Tuesday now and uh, work is continuing on uh, the 350 scale Grissom and I, I I got a head start this morning got an early jump I went ahead and sprayed on the uh, gunmetal colors I'm gonna be masking those off because what I would like to do is work on these decks today uh, I've also sprayed the gunmetal on that boy that looks nice that's just a nice even I just like it when it when when work things work out like they're supposed to put a coat of uh, a primer over this long seam and uh, it's looking okay we're going to uh, uh, do the top do the the gray coat over that next so I think we're in good shape there also the gray coating on the decks like I said and the nacelles now I need to put on the masks that I made yesterday for the uh, blue areas and I'll also mask this area back off and uh, we'll get to it I can also paint the gray on the pylons as well so uh, let's get to putting those masks on alrighty I've got the first base coat of gray on here and that's just a sky gray maybe two parts sky gray to one part flat white and that's gonna give me my nice uh, base color and then we're going to start working whites on top of that and let me find my color reference so that I can show you what I've got in mind uh, let's see where is it where can it be well here's part of it here's part of it uh, we're going to be doing this color of gray so the uh, whites will show up against it and I had another one here that showed the uh, ah. this is the one I was looking for 
this is this color of gray right here and uh, then we'll be doing the white against that so uh, yeah that's pretty close it, it, it could be a little bluer it could stand to be a little bluer but uh, I'm happy with it and then we'll uh, let this dry and we'll start putting down the the pin striping or the uh, stripes that are gonna delineate those white shapes okay it took oh you know the requisite two or three tries to get it right one day you know I'll, all, I've only been doing this stuff for 15 16 years now so I'll get it right eventually but uh, here's what we've got what you're seeing is yellow is going to stay a darker gray so this is what we're going to do is we're going to paint the whole thing gray the same body color gray here we're going to mask it and then paint the white over top of it now this is the area that the decal will lay over top of uh, here we have a center line white box here or sorry a gray box there getting this angle to work was kind of a treat so uh, you may see some wrinkles there that you have to uh, stretch around and kind of get them to shape and you might even need to do a wee bit of exacto trimming once it's laid down but there you go so that's all set now that I have those masks measured and done up I can go ahead and strip them all strip all this vinyl off and we will uh, paint them gray now there are the clear inserts here where the uh, uh, navigation light and strobe go and there's not much I mean it's a tiny little thing the only thing I can suggest would be to uh, go ahead and get the paint on them because you know it's gonna happen and then just be prepared to uh, either um, take an exacto and just shave it off you know just shave the paint back off of it or maybe a little bit of uh, uh, thinner or acetone on a uh, q-tip will take the uh, top layers of paint back down but those are those have to be laid in so great this is going to uh, this is going to work out just fine I'm sure now I want to find where is that cutout decal that I had here we go I want to make sure that when this is put down this little piece here that's manually patched in it has to be okay that's gonna work and that's gonna work okay lovely all right I think I am ready to paint the main deck here the white pass on the main deck um, I've got it's, it's one of the things that I think I mentioned it earlier uh, that there you know you have a choice of painting the white first and then masking it and painting the gray or painting the gray first and masking it and painting the white um, either way has its pluses and minuses this is the uh, this, uh, this I think is the cleanest version it is to paint the gray first mask what you're keeping gray and then paint white over it because then your white stays clean while you're handling it and all those good reasons but it does mean a lot of masking here on this on the uh, bottom of the top deck whereas the top of the top deck has much less of that um, these are these are the areas that I'm going to be white so I need to put some painters tape around them to mask those off and then we will do a, a blending pass which will you know soften the contrast between the two of them but there is yet a third color of a darker gray that goes on here that will be painted on over top of these white masks so you got to do the white second and then so this is light gray white dark gray this is simply light gray and then white um, and then the misting coat so uh, let me get out the tape and tape off the areas and really there isn't anything here except this seam down the center and uh, I don't need to paint anywhere up in here where the dome is because 
that dome has been painted and has been masked so what I'm going to do is just run a piece of tape up over that seam so I don't get anything where it's not supposed to be the rest of this entire thing actually uh, I'm going to go ahead and mask that as well here join these two where it, there you go where that where those meet up there so now we've got everything that you see gray here can be painted white and of course those blue shapes under there are still masked off uh, here I only want what's in the immediate area of these templates to be painted white so let's go ahead and mask those off this shape in here will be painted by hand later on that is a it's also a uh, gunmetal but it's not it's not an easy shape to mask off by itself so I'm not gonna just paint that in by hand Come on. When you, when you tear tape and it coils up on your fingers. Just a little bit over that. There. And I will be careful to keep the... Uh, the white paint off of that shape there like I said we'll mask that and paint it later I know this is almost as thrilling as watching paint dry but I'm just running painters tape around the uh, outer edges of the templates uh, got some fuzz in there let's get rid of that And what this is going to be is a very white, high contrast white um, pass. And then the blending coat that I will put over top of this will be a, a uh, not, not a very stark white. It'll be a white with some gray in it. But okay, we're ready to paint. Okay, I am getting ready to paint the top decks of the, uh, well, the top and bottom of this top deck on the Grissom, and I've made up a concoction of a color. Um, it's not completely white. It's mostly white with a drop of light blue and a drop of the, uh, um, let's see, this would be medium sea gray. Yes, medium sea gray, which is a cooler gray. Um, just in it so that when I put the hot the white highlights on it then you've got some place to go if you do something that's you know very stark white then you can't get any whiter than that and you are you've boxed yourself into a corner so um, what I'm going to do is spray the areas here that are masked that uh, that are open the areas that are masked off will stay the, the gray that they are now and this is what I was saying when I was referring to uh, sometimes it's easier to paint white and then keep it white and then paint gray. And sometimes it's easier to paint gray, keep it gray, and then paint white. It's a, 
it's a matter of what order you do it in but I found that by painting the whiter colors or the lighter colors last then I'm not as conscious about thumbprints and you know just getting the lighter color dirty I work for I have a tendency to work from dark to light uh, so I've made this made this color up and uh, I'm gonna spray it on the deck and that I think we're gonna start there and I think the only other piece to spray would be this guy I can spray it because it's mostly this white color and uh, I still have some masking to do on the rest of that so uh, let's try this out and see how it goes okay it's a bit later than I normally shut down for the day but I wanted to get everything to the same stage so that it can be drying overnight and I come back to it tomorrow I've got the pylons painted with the masking on them I've got the nacelles painted with the masking on it I've got the top and bottom of the uh, upper deck painted with the masking on it. I've got the top of the pontoon painted with the first stage masking on it. Got the bottom of the pontoon painted with the first stage masking on it. So yay! All of that can be drying overnight. We'll come back to it tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. To morning. See that's how, that's how late it is for me. Come back to it tomorrow morning and strip all this off and see how see how it turned out. Good morning everybody. It's Wednesday and what a great day it's been already. Uh, I did the uh, stripping of the, the ceremonial stripping of the masks this morning and uh, it, turn, it turned out great. There you go. That's the uh, engine nacelle, or the nacelle top. The gray is what was on there before. The uh, lighter gray. It's not quite white but that's what was painted on yesterday strip the mask back off and you get this lovely two-tone effect. Um, I've already gone ahead and started painting some other stuff back up but I wanted you to see things like here's the bottom deck this is the original gray and uh, uh, I saw online where somebody was giving some flack about these indented shapes and how they're not canon. Um, I've got a reference picture that kind of belays that point so uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hassle them. I'm, I'm not using the decals that go in there because those emitter decals I do not believe were part of the original Grissom design. They were added to the Pegasus, and I am doing Grissom. I made that mistake up here. I actually put those uh, those uh, pads on here, the pad de printed there or the decals, and I think that was wrong. I think I uh, I jumped generations there. So we're not going to be putting those on. But I've got a reference picture that shows that there's an indent there or something like it. So I'm going to leave that. And uh, I've gone ahead and started uh, painting in other bits this morning because I was in such a uh, uh, such a good mood from how everything else turned out. I've gone ahead and let me head, go ahead and strip these off because this paint is dried. But I wanted you to see how the inside of the pylons look with that mask removed. And you see the lovely uh, gray in there and the gray on the outside. I'm still leaving the blue, the masking over the blue on because those are going to stay masked for a lot longer um, until I'm absolutely sure I've done everything else because there is a blending coat. I want to do a misted blending coat over top of these to knock down some of that uh, contrast and uh, you don't want to put that blending coat over top of the blue. The blue should be a stark, stark uh, contrast to everything else. Uh, also, I've pulled off the mask from the pontoon here, and you can see how lovely and sharp all of these grays and whites look now. Um, let's see, where are we? Oh, why I did all that is I want to go ahead and put the third color on. Or another color on and that goes those are the ones that go over top of the white shapes here or the whitish shapes here and uh, also on the fantail of the pontoon so um, yeah I just need to get out another color and paint those bits on and that's going to be a, a straight up um, a straight up medium sea gray I might put a drop of the light blue in there but uh, we're going to go ahead and mix that up and paint those bits. Okay, as promised. Now this is after the uh, 
ship has been repainted to Pegasus, but I think you can see right in here that's not just a removed detail that looks like an indent so I can see just justification for the uh, for the reasoning of that of those indents it also helps me to see I'm gonna maybe put some sort of scorching underneath here to break that up but this is the dirty model after Pegasus this is it's very hard to find uh, photos of the Grissom before it was repainted the many many times it was repainted or re uh, restickered so finding a pristine Grissom picture is uh, like finding a hen's tooth they are they are rare alrighty I think I've done just about the last of the painting I can do today before I need to uh, go out and pick up some more paint I've just done a light pass of the silver on top and bottom of the pontoon and for the silver of the I have uh, chosen the not the chrome silver that's stupid uh, that's obvious we don't do that uh, flat aluminum flat aluminum is what I'm using for that and um, I will on the top I kind of I'm gonna leave it pretty much as it is there's a section of white back here that I need to paint in but for the bottom pontoon, there's going to be some uh, paneling, some faux Aztecing, some shading, which I'm probably going to do with uh, maybe gunmetal or a darker, uh, darker aluminum color. Just some carding there, just to indicate some break up there. But I'm going to let that get good and dry before I do that. Um, and that's about where I'm stuck for the moment. And uh, then. Uh, then we will uh, see where we go. I'm checking out my colors here to see how I like the uh, the gunmetal fins against the rest of the engine. I like that. I can tell that I do, do need to brighten this bit up some and it's going to get some uh, of the not quite white because this is the uh, the saucer is going to be the brightest thing on here. The saucer and then by the time you put the nacelles on here, that starts to lighten everything up. But this needs to be just a little bit brighter than that. Again, leaving these blue areas masked to keep those good and fresh. Already continuing work on Grissom. Back from lunch and I have to say, uh, it's been almost two years to the day. But uh, I went to a Chinese buffet for lunch. Yes, we found a buffet that had opened back up. Yay, wonderful. Um, but now I've got my old friend the buffet bloat right now, so I am moving kind of slow. I've got two things I could be doing. And the one thing I'm going to do is uh, I want to uh, take these white areas, these areas that I've got the masks off of, and I want to do the uh, very faint, very light blending coat on these. And all that's going to do is, the, the uh, goal is to knock down the high contrast, particularly, uh, not so much on the nacelles, I like them, but on this patchwork here. I want to knock that down a little bit. And then the other job to do is to uh, introduce some of the shading to the uh, silver bits. I painted those before lunch, and uh, now they've, they've dried sufficiently. And I want to come through and, and do some, uh, I guess that would be lateral shading, longitudinal shading. I don't know. But let me do a quick and dirty, uh, quick and dirty blending coat on these guys. Okay, I've just done with the uh, blending coat. And it may not be able to tell so much on the camera. But this is a lot more subtle than it used to be. And, uh... This is pretty much ready for, well, it's ready for construction, really, but um, it's ready for a flat coat uh, for decaling. But uh, uh, I need to do a bunch of construction first, so we're going to put that to the side. We're starting to check off things that are finished, or as finished as they're going to be for right now. The uh, 
the pylons are more or less finished. They're ready for construction. The nacelles are more or less finished. They're ready for construction. Uh, along with the undersides here. The top saucer, which I haven't uh, shown much of, that's been ready for uh, construction, which means putting the windows in. Uh, the windows, uh, I still have not put any windows into anything yet. And uh, I recommend not doing that until you get to this stage, really, because there's no sense putting them in this early uh, when you can do all of this painting with them out. So there you go. Uh, I think what I need to concentrate now on is this top deck here and the, uh, the gradations of silver on that. So let's clear everything off of here that's not involved in that specific task and uh, concentrate on it. Everybody, welcome back. It's Thursday, the gateway to the weekend, and we got some tremendous progress to report today. Uh, I have taken all of the remaining masking off. I painted this this morning. Uh, but that's the blue masking off. The blue masking is off of this. Uh, everything is looking great. I sprayed everything with a satin coat. And it did a weird thing to just this part here. The silver reacted weirdly. So I'm, I repainted the silver just in this area where the uh, paint or where the uh, clear coat had uh, it almost made it start to run again which was strange um, maybe there was a maybe the clear coat went on too heavy and it reacted to it so uh, we're gonna take all of that off because really the only thing to do today is to start jamming some light into this um, we're pretty we're pretty we're there I mean we're just gonna start putting some uh, tiny nano sized SMLEDs all over the place and then we're going to start buttoning this thing up. Um, I need to work on these shapes that go back here in the corners. They are uh, some complicated light piping that is meant to light up these little guys. And I have to tell you, the light piping is uh, the light piping parts of this kit are unique and some somewhat troublesome. But uh, I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna work in the long run. Some light blocking around them is gonna be a treat. Um, I had thought of using a lot of fiber optics, and uh, really, I think I think I'm re I think I am rethinking that because uh, the fiber optics are gonna be. They're not. They're not as easy to run as bulbs with wire. Fiber optics require. Uh, they require straight or runs where you can bend the uh, fiber optic or uh, otherwise uh, have un unencumbered access for them. But these little guys, I can put them in the spot and then, oh shush, okay, turning you off, um, where you can put the bulb in and then turn that wiring at a right angle and just work it out of all kinds of problems. So I think we are going to be using that instead and they're small enough that I can jam them up against the openings or the little uh, uh, clear inserts that uh, go into the openings and uh, I think that's going to work out just fine. Here's a red one. This red one is going to have to go here in such a way that it lights up that red beacon there but it is light blocked from all of that. So that's the kind of thing we are dealing with. Also, you know, there's a red beacon on the top of the nacelle. There are reds that have to go on the port side of all of the uh, uh, of the pontoon there. Then, of course, we've got all of the strobes. There are basically three types of lighting. There are beacons. There are strobes. Well, not really beacons. They're navigational lights that are constantly on then there are strobes and then there is a tiny bit of room lighting what I'm gonna call room lighting which is these windows now that the uh, saucer sections have been painted and uh, have a coat of clear on them we need to go around and what you might think is backwards but we need to go ahead and put the uh, the window sections in I had thought about leaving the windows out 
make it look like a uh, filming model, but yeah, we'll see. We'll try. We'll see how they look with them in. Uh, let's see. Well, the, obviously the strobe goes up in the center there, but the rest of this is just uh, window lighting, which will probably be best accomplished by putting some strip lighting just on the deck here. When I did the big, uh, when I did the big grissom, I just put some strip lighting here and it's shown upward into all of that and it took care of itself so that's what I think I'm going to do this time as well what I'd like to do firstly though is to go ahead and do the nacelles the nacelles get a white strobe back here and then they get a colored uh, formation light up here if I can get these guys done and glued together and isolated then I can pop those onto the top of this deck and then put the saucer on the top of this deck and then this deck will be a finished thing this will be part A part B is going to be the pontoon with the top of the pontoon on we've got strobes here and here and on the belly we've got formation lights here and here on both sides so we've got lots of good lighting on that and then we will go ahead and run all of that wire up the pylons into the bottom deck and this will be part B so this is part B this will be part A and then this will be the final the final joint that we put together will be like that okay we are starting the great embulbening got the first bulb in these are all going to be nano sized SMLEDs uh, that's a cool white going in the uh, strobe area there and uh, what I've done is I've taken the strobe insert that is supposed to go in there and I've inserted it but I sanded it down flat so that I could uh, CA the bulb straight onto the clear piece and that's going to transfer the light through to the, uh, the, little, the much smaller uh, sticky uppy thing now I'm going to take some black tulip and I'm going to light block the bottom of that I should check my black tulip to see that the end is not clogged because that happens quite regularly okay and that's going to glob it over the top of this don't need to worry about being too precious with it this is going to be drying for a good long while now what I can do while that's all happening is I can go ahead and put these window inserts on it and um, set that to the side while I do the other strokes okay progressing with the, the bulbening and uh, it's not going quite as quickly as I had hoped because I keep getting distracted primarily by the uh, uh, season premiere of Picard and all I can say is yowza uh, but I am getting the last of the strobes put in let's see I've got the top and bottom of the saucer got both of the nacelles I've got the belly of the pontoon yeah I just have these two uh, on the front and bow the, the bow and the stern of the pontoon and that will be all of the strobes I've got the navs or the uh, formation lights in the pontoon in the front of the pontoon and on the top of the nacelles so that only leaves the back of the pontoon and the back deck the back main deck but I have to put those lights in and I have to put the impulse engine lights in on the back deck so I'm not uh, I'll do all of those at one time but these are the last two biggins so let me get those in and I think that will be a wonderful place to finish off today's work and I think that's a wonderful place to stop for today uh, got the last of the strobes in front and back we're gonna let that tulip dry overnight which is great because it does take a while to set up but it's worth it um, and uh, that's going to finish it for today. P pick this up tomorrow, put the last of the bulbs in. I'm in no rush, uh, which is also nice because I heard I've got a, uh, a special surprise coming from uh, Keith across the, uh, across the ocean. 
is sending me something special for the stand for this. Well, good morning, folks. It's Friday. It's the last work day of the week, and uh, work is continuing on the chrism, and we're going to be starting to pull a lot of this, a lot of these pieces together today. I've got a lot of the bulbs in. We just start need to we need to start making the uh, sub assemblies, and we're going to start by putting these engines down, these warp nacelles down onto the main deck. Uh, I've got the fins glued in. I've got the lights coming out of it. You can see uh, I've tested it. There is some light blocking that needs to be done from the top, but all of it on the inside is looking good. So uh, let's get these guys glued down. Then we can put this whole piece to the side and start working on the pontoon. There's only a couple more bulbs that need to go in and those are all on the pontoon. I put these in last night I think after I uh, shut down for the day so uh, those are ready to go and the nice thing about doing this last night like I did is that the uh, tulip has had all night to, to uh, dry because the tulip does take a bit of time. It's probably the slowest of the elements here that I've got to dry so let's we need to make a I'm not going to be using the uh, CA or the kicker for this I'm just going to put a small bead of the uh, MEK around this area here and then we're going to lay the nacelle on top of it I'm going to get the uh, clamps out so that I can clamp it down but I want to make sure that I am not messing up any of my finished paint so I'm going to get some paper towel and uh, wrap the area and that way I'm only I'm clamping against the paper towel because these clamps have gotten a little bit dirty over the years and I don't want to mess up the uh, the paint job that I've got on them so let me let me tear up some uh, paper towel strips and I'll be right back okay we've got our first bench test here we've got our red and greens on both sides they're working we've got our strobe on the belly and the uh, top of the pontoons they're working I'm watching that because I thought I saw a double yeah there was a double flash in there it went one two three four five six seven eight nine ten oh, I'm watching it Every once in a while, he wants to throw in a double flash. Now it seems to have settled down now. Not oh, there it goes. Huh. Ralph, what's the deal? This is your board. I've got it, uh... I bet you it's because I don't have all of the wiring, like, uh, insulated and soldered together. Everything's kind of twisted up. That may be introducing some sort of oddness. But yeah. Now that this works, I can close up the pontoon and shove the wiring up the uh, pylons and into the upper deck area. Yeah, the uh, light bleed doesn't seem to be too bad. There's some of it that might be unavoidable, but uh, we'll see. I think I need to uh, put some more uh, tulip in the uh, back. Where's my tulip? Yeah, here it is. In the back area here to block that. These are nice because they actually have a double wall of plastic in them. With this inner, uh, this inner wall or the inner tub there. That helps to provide more light blocking. So those look great, but I can see where I need to do some there. But it is lunchtime, so I'm gonna squeeze some more, uh, squeeze some more tulip in that back, and then we're gonna allow that to uh, set up while I'm eating. I think I want to solder up all of these, and uh, yeah, and then when I come back, we can close up the 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 uh, pontoon here and push the wiring up through the rest of the ship. Alrighty, I've got all the wires kind of pushed down into the bottom. These are the wires that need to continue out. This is the power wire. Um, 
next thing to do really is to glue the top of the pontoon down to the bottom and to do that I need to make sure I've got a nice generous amount of, of the, of the uh, MEK in there and then I'm just going to rubber band it that, there's no there uh, I could wrap tape around it but rubber bands work just as well and it's a nice long cylinder easy to get a rubber band over so let's just do that Alrighty, working on the uh, top deck here of the uh, Grissom and I need to light up the uh, impulse engines here I don't know whose idea it was to open these up they never were uh, so I had to put a little piece of backer in behind that to close those all off. Uh, but here we are. I've got a, a uh, orange SMLED here. And I've just attached it to a plate. And we're going to see what happens. Now when I take this and slide it into the open hole here. Shine it backwards. We get, we get a nice orange glow. And I'm going to center that and uh, tack it down. Okay, it's time to start thinking about, well not start, come on, I've been thinking about it for a while, but it's time to start implementing the plan for the uh, saucer lighting. And um, what I've come up with is this. I think we're gonna be, I think it might even be too much, but you know me, I like my, uh, I like my symmetry. So what I'm gonna do is put four inches of strip lighting just around the center hole here and then take one more inch of it and put it on this uh, little piece of strip styrene and put it on so it's pointing downward and that will light the uh, the windows in the bottom saucer and then then we'll be ready to join the or once this is all wired up I can send that I can uh, Put the uh, the top dome down okay so it looks like the last thing we're gonna do today um, is to glue down the saucer now I have got you know I need I should probably leave some of these out because I could probably use them. I have got everything wired up here it's looking pretty good let me see if I can uh, show that off There you go. Plenty of light for everybody. And I've checked the windows. Everything looks like it's good. Except for these two trouble spots where the beacons are. They still want to shine out the red and green. You'll remember on the uh, the big one that I did. The big Grissom. What I call the BA Grissom. And the B is for big. Um... We ran into problems because those beacons were actually down in the middle where the uh, docking bays were and they've moved them forward here. That probably is more correct, but they're still awfully close to the outside edges and there's a lot of light leak as a, re as a result of that. So uh, what I'm going to do is take, take the old MEK here and... Where's the brush that I used to put the MEK on with? That's not it. That's not it. Uh, here it is. I put it back. That's what happens when you put things... No, I'm sorry. That's not it. This is the one. It's very similar to it, but it's still out. So I want to brush some along these edges. And I left enough slack in the, uh, in the saucer itself that I can position it down and that's uh, I hate to say there's all that's all there is to it but really that's all there is to it so this is one of those things I kind of do a one and done so I need to uh, move the camera unplug the soldering iron clean off every area so that I can have all the elbow room that I need alrighty and I think this is where we're gonna leave it for this week now I had thought of gluing this uh, deck the pylons but then I realized I haven't accounted for any decals that might need to go on top of the pontoon or underneath that deck and I want to do that before I glue those two pieces together I know there's at least one decal that goes here that's going to be a whole lot easier to get to before we uh, glue that deck down so uh, these are the two chunks everything is down to this so uh, we should be able to finish this up and decal it 
uh, in part two. And like I said, that's it for that's it for week one on the Grissom. You like this shirt? I haven't worn it in quite a while. It's a 2010 Wonderfest shirt. Of course, this is the closest a lot of modelers are going to ever be to uh, wearing camo. Not like two things that don't exactly go together. Uh, well, I mean, if you are a uh, an IPMS modeler, you probably have camo. But if you're a spaceship modeler, you probably don't own a lot of camo. I'm just going to go out and make that bold statement on my own. Uh, but that's where we're going to end this week. Uh, got a heck of a lot done. Got all the, got all the templates made for it. Got it all painted. Uh, had to do a lot of the adaptation on my smaller templates. It wasn't a simple upscale like you think it would be. Uh, but that's where she lays. So until next week, we'll be finishing this. I might even finish this up in the beginning of next week and start on the hawk. But um, it's going to depend. Like I said, my uh, my good friend Keith over across the across the ocean is uh, sending me a new base for this Grissom. And if it gets here soon enough. It'll be included. If not, I might have to put this, you know, I'll, I'll show the finished thing, but I might have to do the base a different time if if it doesn't work out that way. So until then, uh, you be good. Be good to each other. Enjoy the weather. Spring is just around the corner, and you know what that means. Wonderfest is not too far behind, my friends. So get, get, get with the getting on. If you've got something that you're ready to bring to Wonderfest, it's time to finish it now. Uh, so until then, you be good. Be good to each other. Go out and play. We'll see you here next week.